Kalari Rally Organization has to do so much to make sure that the competitors and service crews and staff have are well prepared and organized and have all the facilities available for every stage. A typical day starts at about 3, 3 in the morning for the staff to make sure the meals are, meals are prepared for the stage, the lunches are prepared um, for all the competitors and crews as well. So it's quite an operation that has to happen behind the scenes. Um, in total is about 60 staff um, plus um, additional uh, casual staff. So you're looking at a total of about 70 to 75 staff to run this event. You know, the mechanics and the crews and teams also have their days set up for them. They're going to make sure the cars are firing, the bikes are firing, and then uh, make sure the rider or the drivers have got all the equipment for they, they need for the stage. Um, they then finish um, that morning, then set up, uh, or they'll strike, strike campsite, move to the next bivouac, which could be a 600 kilometer drive, and then um, wait for the competitors to arrive again, start working the vehicles. Um, that same night, so they, they'll only get to bed at maybe 11 o'clock, sometimes 12 o'clock, sometimes 2 in, the, 2 in the morning. So you could have a service crew actually having only two hours sleep in literally two days. Stage 3, one of our signature stages as we said in the previous episode, it's going to be a fantastic day for the competitors running in the dunes along the Namibian border just with some flying, fast flying dunes, some technical riding and just the navigation that's just going to be phenomenal, just typical, uh, a typical Dakar type stage as well. Um, this area runs in the Klanmir area, which is um, very significant to Kalahari with the Klanmir community that's just so involved with the event that um, are supplying some of the meals today. And um, also an area where the old uh, Khoi Sun Bushmen still live in the same traditional ways they used to many, many, many years ago. And um, some of them, some of the competitors will come across them along the route. is going to have a really fantastic um, rally today or stage today and being, we'll be racing in areas that is nothing like this in the world. So quite a special and unique stage for Kalari Rally. Stage 3 saw Charon Moore, the KTM factory rider, Taking the stage by 15 minutes ahead of John Kelly, the Botswana-based rider, with uh, Gary Petouris in third, Ger van der fourth, and Henty Anikom rounding up the top five in the motor division. In the side by sides, Jeff Minnett and Siegfried Rousseau won the stage uh, quite convincingly there ahead of Jean Lotta and Nuno Santos. In the auto category, Terence Marsh and Rion Kralin again just being consistent and taking the win ahead of um, Eben Basson in second place with a with a good. Uh, 25 minutes. Garth, we just finished the visit with the people from the Northern Cape Tourism. I guess it was uh, it's nice to have them and important, very important for the event. Absolutely, Marcel. You know, without um, without the local authorities, this won't happen. You know, the land uh, setting up the landowners. You know, going through 40 farms just in one area. Tomorrow is another few farms, and then the th day five is going to or stage five is going to be about another 20 farms. So without the Northern Cape tourism and um, this community you know that 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 uh, these farms that allows us to race in the, on the land uh, won't happen 
So Northern Cape Tourism Authority has been instrumental in helping us and um, you know bringing exposure and, and showing what this area has got for rally. And wow, I mean, you are out there to see. I mean, it speaks for itself. First and foremost, I must welcome the initiative that have been taken to bring this event at ZFM District Municipality, particularly in David Kripa and in this small area like Ritfonte to host you. We are honored to have this rally here and I think the community of this place will never forget the day of today. I think it was stage two. We got some long straights coming up and as you can see the cars got absolutely no windscreen and um, coming down this fast straight one of these birds had lifted up and because we were going at such a pace it just came through the windscreen hit me square on in the face feathers everywhere but we keep going and then um, about 10 minutes later I feel something on my shoulder and I look to my right and the bird's sitting on my shoulder so we keep, we keep going and we just basically, I grabbed the, grabbed the bird, just stuck it out the front windscreen and just chucked him out. And the car behind us, they said, came up to us that evening and said, like, what did you throw out your, out your car? And we like, we hit a couple of birds and luckily they survived. Stage four will take place at the picturesque uh, Gurupan Lodge and um, absolutely beautiful uh, dunes, rolling dunes and very technical dunes making it very, very difficult driving and of, of, of course um, making sure that the navigators are kept frosty during the stages. The other part as well which is very new to Kalahari and in Rally um, is that we brought in the service area so there's two points where the, at the, at the Gurupan Lodge where the service crews will see the competitors. Every 100 kilometers I will see the, the competitors and interact with them so that's going to be quite special as well. Today's stage, uh, stage four, was quite tough for the competitors. Uh, it really tested the drivers and the nav, and especially the, the degree of difficulty in regards to the um, how the dunes ran. They were just there wasn't a, a very good flow in the dunes. It just kept on uh, keeping you guessing all the time. Um, the run-ups was was short and very steep climbs, getting the guys stuck. There were negative cambers, um, so the guys went through some really tough sections today and it really took a lot of concentration making sure that the guys really thought about the stage and how they approached the stage and that really made it for a very, very interesting and fantastic uh, another signature stage for Kalara Rally and for the competitors. Sharon Moore, the KTM factory rider, taking the stage win ahead of John Kelly with just over four minutes in third place. Gary Pretorius, Gert van der in fourth and Henty Hanna coming fifth. In the cyber size, Jeff Minnett and Siegfried Rousseau taking the stage win again ahead of Jaime Scharl and Carl Wilstazen. In the order category, Rian Kleiren and Terence Marsh, Mr. Consist himself, taking the stage win again but not far behind with literally 30 seconds. Even by Sona Harrod Skitter and in third place was Philip Wooten, Rulof Jans van Rensburg, followed by Dior van Bredaal. Today, stage four was actually better than yesterday, um, but uh, we ended off nicely and we still on top of what we wanted to achieve to thus far, so very happy for the results thus far. So we've been talking about it last, or the, in the car this morning, it's an amazing event. It's actually something that uh, you don't realize that, that it's on your doorstep. So doing something like this is probably the closest that you'll come to a Dakar experience. So this is probably the reason why we're doing this, is to get that seat time and doing preparation towards the bigger dream.
of the car. Last season, if you take the whole sack season combined, the, the time that you spend inside the vehicle is the same as what we're doing here in a, in a week's time. So, so for us, it's precious seat time. It's, it's experience that we're building. And um, I think the, the main objective is just to, to see it through and get to the, to the end, yeah. And to finish the race off with a smile. That's, that's the main objective. Stage four was an awesome day. Navigation was really tricky today. Um, I got into such a good rhythm in the morning, didn't make any mistakes and caught up right to the front of the pack um, and was feeling really confident. Uh, after the first refuel, I made one navigational error, cost me a couple minutes, uh, but after that got into a good rhythm and uh, finished strong. Uh, it was a bit of an up and down day, uh, a whole lot of guys got lost, um, cut pieces of the track, so it's going to be interesting to see what the results are today. So this is my first rally and it's been a real eye opener. So you, I came here as prepared as possible, but uh, you can't really prepare for things you don't know. So it's been a good learning curve, just figuring out what to do and when to do it. And, and um, you know, my advice to, to anybody that's coming to do a rally would be, you know, prepare, 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 prepare and, and prepare some more. In regards to challenging repairs, we had to do an engine swap um, last night with one of our customers with the riders with the 450 2014 model, which the engine suffered some damages and we didn't have the required reports for a repair, but luckily we did have a donor motorcycle, 2017 500. So we decided to do an engine swap. It was a late night's work, a late night's job. I think we finished in the early mornings and but the, got the bike running again, ready to start the next stage. Stage five will run along the Botswana border fence. Um, in the Van Salesris area and run along uh, a beautiful floss flame dunes with exceptionally difficult navigation. Um, the stage will be just shy of 900 kilometres and will eventually finish in Mafeking on the liaison. So it's going to be a very long day for competitors and service crews and we hope to see them all certainly back at the bivouac. Mm -hmm.